As a quick summary of trying to tie all these together, let's use an analogy to help understand what might be the relationships between our real, reactive, and then again with our apparent power. So when we have our complex power, remember that the result of this vector is the apparent power. And sometimes the apparent power is called the delivered power. And that's the total amount of power that you have to give to some source to give it both the real power and the reactive power that's required. And so as a, as a pretty good analogy that a former student brought up to me is that we can honestly understand real, reactive, and apparent power if you've ever taken a trip to the bar and someone's poured you a terrible beer. So let's imagine that you, after a long sequester of COVID-19, have finally gone out to the bar and you order yourself your favorite tasty brew at the Green Dragon. And let's say they pour you a beer all the way up to here, but they do such a crappy job that there's just a ton of foam that is on top of this beer and none of that which you wanted. And so in my analogy here, what you really want is the real power. And the real power in this example is the drink that you ordered. But to deliver that real power, you also have this reactive power that keeps getting exchanged between the source and the circuit. So to get any of that real power, you also had to deal with the reactive power. And so what our apparent power is, is the totality of this. So regardless of how much real power and reactive power you needed, you still paid the five, 10 bucks to get the whole mug. So you had to pay for the whole container, but some of it you wanted, which was the real power, and some of it you didn't want, which was the reactive power. And so what this power factor tells you is sort of what's the relationship between them. And in any real circuit, you really want to minimize this reactive power and cut it back and cut it back until what you're mainly delivering is your, is your real power. And so this relationship between the things that you want and the things that you don't want is called the power factor. So PF gives me the relationship between how much real energy I wanted and how much energy I had to buy to get it done. And this can also be expressed directly from our phase angle, the phi of z, which is the relationship between v and i. So typically in a real system, you want this power factor to be one. So where something is a power factor of one, every bit of that beer that you paid for, every bit of that electricity that you paid for, you got, because your real power is equal to your apparent power. But let's say, so, and that makes you, we'll put a happy face. Let's say though that if your apparent power, if your power factor is only one half, what that means is, is that half of all the energy that was sent to you had to keep being exchanged with the voltage source and got sent back. And so you're really unhappy because you paid for the whole thing, you paid for the whole circuit, all of the electricity, but you only got half of it that was usable. So it's desirable for electronic systems and any electrical system generally to have a power factor of one. You want to pay for all of the energy that you end up using because reactive power cannot be used. It has to be exchanged. Now, the challenge is going to be is that you cannot make all systems completely real. So any sort of motor I may have can be modeled as a resistor and an inductor, and that's just sort of the way it's manufactured. And that inductor is going to give me some sort of reactive power. There's absolutely nothing I can do about it, but I can build circuitry around here to minimize that power factor and make it more effective. And actually, power companies will charge different industries more based upon the amount of reactive power that they consume. So a highly inefficient motor, no one wants that because there's going to be a lot of energy exchanged between the circuit and the source and the power company doesn't want to deal with it. They would rather send you all real power. And so something we'll see a little bit later is how we can compensate this power factor and make it better, and also how, depending on how power efficient your system is, you might be charged differently.